Hi everybody, thank you for joining my presentation from University Press to eScholarship Publishing, Differences and Similarities. I recently assumed the role of Publications Manager for eScholarship Publishing at the California Digital Library following a long career in nonprofit scholarly publishing, primarily at the University of California Press's Journals Division. This transition has afforded me a somewhat unique perspective on both these publishing domains. And I'm particularly interested in the ways in which library publishers might both adopt best practices from their press colleagues while maintaining the distinct stance from which they serve a different purpose within their institution. So here's a little bit about my career to date. Um, I did my degree at Oxford Brookes University and kind of fell into publishing and worked at a number of the publishing houses that are around the city. In 2000, I moved to University of California Press, where I was uh, first library relations manager for about a decade, and then journals manager for several years. Um, the press publishes about 30 journals in the humanities and social sciences, and it's definitely a business. It's been around for over 150 years and is fairly uh, well established. So in 2019, I moved to eScholarship Publishing to become the Publications Manager. eScholarship is part of the California Digital Library. And even though geographically, UC Press and eScholarship are about a five minute walk apart, they're very separate entities. And um, it's been really interesting and informational from moved from one to the other to see what's in co what we have in common and to see what's different. So while the emphasis is different, there are a lot of things that are the same. And uh, both the press and the scholarship are really concerned with mission-driven publishing. And we also have a lot of the same types of challenges. We're fairly leanly staffed, trying to make your content um, visible and findable in a sea of information, the technology that you might want to use, the costs and demands involved in, in employing those keeping your various stakeholders engaged, your editors, your readers, your authors. Competition is um, different at the press because you're mainly competing with you know, other university presses, but also commercial publishers. But there's also competition from other journals generally. How do you distinguish your journals from the others that are out there? How, do you, how does your journal attract the best, best authors who could go somewhere else? And then finally, value. At the press, we were concerned with demonstrating value, particularly to libraries, but also to societies that we published on behalf of. And competition, value for you may be demanding, um, showing, demonstrating value to certain stakeholders who support the work that you do. So my work at UC Press as journals manager, mainly involved a very hands-on management of journals, of journal editors and societies. The press owned a larger number of titles, so I pretty much had control, or what felt like control over what went on with the journal. And there was a lot of active management, selecting editors, thinking about developing content, etc. We also published on behalf of societies and retaining society business was a significant part of the work I did as well. Understanding their concerns, particularly around uh, declining subscriptions and open access. The work I did had, had to demonstrate value to various constituencies. The, um, the journals division, our main customer base is institutions. So trying to be library friendly and understand that their concerns was a big part of the work that we did. As mentioned before, keeping our society customers happy was also a significant amount of work. We had a lot of competition from commercial publishers, um, especially with society business, we'd often lose them to bigger commercial publishers, or there would be another journal that would enter the space that had more resources and um, it meant that it would kind of cannibalize your own publications. Discovery and usage is key, making sure that your library partners are cataloging and indexing your content, making sure that it's findable, really is vital to the success of your publication. 
But because we're a business, most of our work focused on subscriptions, maintaining subscriptions. As a nonprofit, there's really not much fat to be trimmed and there's not much wiggle room if we take any losses. So this was a kind of constant focus of, of our work. And as I've mentioned before, there are more and more journals entering this space um, and no more money to buy them. So if you wanted to launch a journal or you wanted to have a journal that was in an emerging field or a niche field, the cost considerations around that were a significant factor. For those of our journals that had the impact factor, we spent a lot of time trying to bolster that. It's well documented the impact factor has a number of pluses and minuses about it. It's not the nicest metric, but once you're in there, you really have to kind of play that game. And so it was a constraint as much as anything else. And then finally, technology expectations. As a, as a press and as a, as a publisher that was trying to attack, attract society business, keeping pace with technology so that users and readers were able to um, access your content, were able to use your content in a way that was most appropriate to their work was really important. And that changes all the time. And uh, the costs and resourcing around that were also a significant consideration. So I haven't been at eScholarship a very long time, but I've had some early thoughts and impressions from what I've seen so far. And in the way I think of it as same but different. Obviously the major thing is nothing's being sold and there's no subscriptions. And it's really nice to focus on publishing rather than finances. The key thing that strikes me coming to this platform is how concerned everyone is about best practices. And this was really kind of a given at UC Press. And so it's been interesting to focus on that and think about how we can implement this for our journals so that they are meeting the required benchmarks. Journal management is very different. Um, it's not quite as hands-on, but you do want to encourage your editors to really be the best that they can be, without that being a cliche, but without a contract, or if you're not giving them any money, so there's no transactional relationship, how do you get them to do that? And it's a question more of a carrot than a stick. And I'm Still working on figuring that out. This is very similar, reaching readership and discoverability. It's really um, important that readers can get to your content, can download it, and that's the joy of open access, that it's all free, but it's you're still in a big stream of information. So making sure that your content is findable where it needs to be is really important. Another great difference is that niche and emerging fields are okay. They don't have to be financially viable. You can have titles come out that really address small areas and that's, that's not a problem. And that's been a really wonderful thing about coming here. How do you use quality metrics if you're not gonna use the impact factor? That's something that I've been thinking about. And, you know, when I, came to e-scholarship, it was made clear to me that the IF wasn't really a consideration. But in the absence of that, how are you signaling to your readers and your authors the quality of your journal? Demonstrating value to stakeholders is also important. How do you show to your funders that the work that you're doing is important and should be maintained? And then finally, expectations around platform design and tools. If you have a subscription income, you can put some of that money invested in technology, but without that, how are you uh, meeting the ever-changing requirements of your readership? Here is a list I wanted to share. These are some things that we're thinking of implementing across our platform, or we're implementing them already. And I wanted to share them with you as possible starting points for you and your journal or your platform. I know that this is a big ask because everyone's very busy and everyone's wearing a number of different hats. Maybe think about what your organization or journal is trying to achieve and pick one or two things, activities that might help support that. So the first of the list, best practices. This is really fundamental. And the Library Publishing Forum has an excellent best practices list that it's really worth taking a look at. And this will really guide you 
as you think about things to add to your publication to enhance it and to signal its quality. ISSN and DOIs, being careful about how peer review is established and just starting to build a pedigree for your publication. Think about editor engagement. How do you get a journal ready to publish? How do you help them to establish themselves from the get-go so that their publication isn't successful and doesn't start foundering after the first couple of issues? I talk a little bit sometimes about the cost of a free platform, that I think if you're providing a service for your editors, it's reasonable to, do, to expect something else in return. You can, from the outset, lay out the best practices and ask them to meet that. And some of these editors will be really engaged and it's worth finding your champions and helping leverage those relationships with other relationships that may not be as successful. Perhaps you want to think about putting a successful journal editor um, to mentor a, a new journal and find ways to kind of make and build those connections that are a little bit hands off for you. Author and reader engagement is key as I've stressed before. How do you keep people coming to your content? How do you get authors engaged? And there are small communications that you can do um, perhaps once or twice a year just to tell a story about your journal or your, or your system and um, keep people coming back. Data and metrics tell a great story and this is, this is a, a useful way to keep people engaged. Are these scholarship stats are sent out on a regular basis, but you could do something as simple as emailing an editor the top three read articles for that year. Indexing and cataloging is important. Perhaps your journal's ready to go into Medline. Perhaps it needs to be in an industry-wide database such as um, LexisNexis if it's a legal journal, perhaps in a psychology database so that it's found and used by researchers. I'm curious to know if libraries are cataloging OA, content, uh, OA journals. I hear different things, but that's also a really important place to be. At the press, we used to emphasize our institutional pedigree. University of California and University uh, Press already convey certain values just by saying it. And as a part of a certain institution, there are also values that will be conferred upon your journal. How do you leverage that to distinguish yourself and your values, particularly as distinct from commercial publishers? And then finally, you're library friendly. We used to um, be very heartened at UC Press when libraries would talk about how important university presses are and how much support that they wanted to give to us and the work that we did. And I would hope that um, libraries would also be supporting you in this way. So those are just a few of the quick things that you can use um, to promote your journal or your platform. And I'd be happy to discuss, discuss these further with you in the Q&A at the end of the session. I want to thank you for your time. And overall, I'd like to stress that for me, open access is more about putting a journal online for free. It's about making research available so that it can inform and influence readers and demonstrate value to your funders. And I look forward to hearing your questions. Thank you very much.